Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and welcome to a review for Far Cry 4. I played the PlayStation 4 version of this game and before we get into the meat and drink of this review, a quick statement to make at the start of this video. This isn't a paid product placement or advertising for uh, Far Cry 4 or Ubisoft. All opinions in this video are my own and my opinion is that I think Ubisoft are a bunch of stupid cunts. <laughs> but anyway, um, I digress. Let's get on with the review and let's skip to the intro video. See you on the other side, folks. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to start off with the story. Now, the game is set in a fictional country known as Kirat. It is loosely based on Nepal and it's set in the Himalayas, which I think is a fantastic. Uh, location for a Far Cry game. Lots of mountains, lots of cliffs, lots of bendy narrow roads to ride your tracks up and down while you're hunting for animals or chasing bandits. You know it's it's a great location, well thought out. You can hang glide, you can parachute, you can fly on in these little uh, gyro cop uh, copters. So there's plenty of, of opportunities to explore you know and I think probably going by either on foot or by um, the, the uh, the gyrocopters is probably the best way of traveling in this game you know the standard kind of formula in games of jumping in a car or a truck and driving about is, is kind of mundane in this game and kind of outdated you know there's so many great things you can do you can swim you can you can swim there are lots of fish uh, well, some of them are quite nasty fish to be honest that, that hunt you in this game and yeah you know there are plenty of ways to explore the map the map is quite big I think it is about the same size as Far Cry 3 it might be slightly bigger so plenty to do in, in this game um, and as far as the story is concerned the main character that you play as um, he is RJ Gale or AJ Gale if you prefer that basically there's two pronunciations for his name and both of them are correct because he is referred to as AJ Gale in the game but also RJ Gale now RJ Gale of course would be the native pronunciation the karate kind of uh, language and Kirat is kind of a, a sort of a ethno-European, Indo kind of uh, country. You know, it's kind of in the Himalayas, like I said. So they they are kind of that sort of uh, culture, I guess. Um, and basically, he is going to Kirat. He's returning to the country of his birth. He left there at the age of I think three or four years of age. He fled the country with his mother. The country's in a in a civil war, basically. Um, between Pagan Min and the Golden Path. Now the Golden Path are the rebellious group and they are led by Amita and Sabal. You meet them later on in the game. They basically they both have different ideologies on what is the correct way to to run a country basically, to run a state. Um, Amita is more for modernizing the country. She thinks you know the drugs that they can get from farming and from other kind of uh, activities within the game can be used to help rebirth the country and use as a kind of source of income. She's got this kind of modern way of thinking. Whereas Sabal is more of a traditionalist, he thinks that um, you know, the ways that the way the things have always been, like girls being, you know, led into forced marriages and stuff like that, is the way that things should continue in this game. And it's great because uh, some of the missions between these two characters, these two main key characters in the story and they do really shape, you know, how you think about things. You know, not just in this game, but in real life as well. And it's an interesting um, aspect. It's certainly a gameplay aspect that, you know, it it really kind of makes you think about your choices. And the choices you make in the game, they can actually change the mission types. For example, it's one mission where, you know, you you um, if you play a if you choose the option from Sabal you basically have to destroy all the crop the crops destroy the farming destroy the base and all the enemies whereas if you choose a meter you're trying to do the complete opposite you're trying to save these crops you're trying to stop the enemies lighten them up with flamethrowers and grenades and uh, molotov cocktails and all sorts of things basically and you know it's really really a cool aspect um touching on the villain pagan min i think he's a fantastic villain he is um, voice acted by I think it's Troy Baker I believe who was you know he's one of the main guys in the video games industry when it comes to voice acting and he does a fantastic job he is sinister he's articulate he's crazy in the right kind of way you know in the kind of uh, Heath Ledger Joker kind of way and you know he's fantastic the only thing is with 
um, Pagan Min, he very rarely makes physical appearances in this game. You see him at the start, and you know this isn't really um, a spoiler or anything. It's, you, you've seen the trailers, and it's it's in like the first five to ten minutes of the game. You see him. Uh, he's sitting at a table, dinner table with you, which you've just kind of well in his mind he's rescued you, but you're, you're basically escaping. You're escaping him in the opening mission, and you're with this um, rebel leader, I suppose he is. Um, he's part of the Golden Path, and he's basically text, texted um, Sabal to say that he's with RJ Gali. And at the dinner table, Pega Min's like, oh, a text for help, a text for help? You don't text for help, you scream. And he, he basically stabs him with a knife in the back, forces him to go to the balcony still holding the knife in his back and says scream scream from your diaphragm scream and it's it just shows you how how mental this guy Pagamin is it's it's a fantastic opening you know one of the best openings to a video game I've seen this year and certainly that I've played and it just really sets it up to, for a nice kind of uh, good versus evil you know story villain but unfortunately you don't see enough of Pagamin in this game most of the time it's just it's just um, radio chatter in between missions, after you complete a mission, you get Pagan Minta. You know, he pops up in the radio chat and says, "Oh, Ajay Gali, you know, I wouldn't trust a meter if I was you. No, naughty boy, naughty, naughty, naughty." He just says things like that, and it's, it's, you know, it's frustrating because why put all the effort, all the hard work? I mean, the guy features on the box work to the cover. In the special edition of the game, there's an actual figurine which I actually have, um, of him sitting on top of the, the trunk of an elephant with the. AK-47 and the bullets and the bazookas and everything by the side of this uh, ornament elephant. He's in the the game trailers, you know, and it's just it's like false advertising in a way. You know, he's portrayed, he's built up, and yeah, um, <laughs> it's just frustrating. But anyway, that's pretty much the the main basis of the story. So now we're going to move on to gameplay. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the gameplay of this game. Um, any veterans from the previous Far Cry games will be fairly comfortable with this game. It's pretty much the same th concept. Um, you don't have the malaria th kind of threats that you had in Far Cry 2. And there are some things which are slightly different. Uh, some some different weapons and some different uh, forms of transport which I've already mentioned previously in the story part of this video. Um, overall the gameplay is pretty good. It's pretty solid. Um, there aren't many glitches or bugs that I've come across. There was there was one in particular when I, I parachuted off a cliff aiming towards a cave and I got stuck on a rock and I was stuck there for about a minute or two. This was a cave near the south of the map and it was kind of irritating but eventually I did w w I was able to wriggle free by using the analog stick going left right left right left right jump and eventually I was able to get clear but I was kind of stuck in this kind of uh, wedge in the cliff and you, you know stuck in that wedge you do see a little bit of a uh, low resolution kind of cliffs and stuff but you know that's to be expected you know I wasn't meant to to crash into this cliff but you know it is something to observe and something to make note of in this video um, bugs wise nothing really to note loading times can sometimes be a little bit slow I have noticed it could be it could be spruced up a little bit but it's nothing to write home about um, Gameplay is some it's kind of similar to Assassin's Creed as well, or or most Ubisoft games for that matter. You know, if you've played Watch Dogs this year, you'll know all about this. Same with Shadow of Mordor, really as well. You know, it's the, the same kind of um, go up to the the tower, watchtower, liberate the watchtower, and that reveals a little bit of information on the map, shows you some side quests, some activity, and some collectibles, which you can of course obtain then in your spare time or, or in side missions, etc. And also to make note of the side missions, they are pretty cool, they are pretty entertaining, and they are quite diverse. You know, I I am a fan of Assassin's Creed, and at times playing Assassin's Creed it can be a little bit mundane, it can be a little bit irritating, looking for the same you know treasure chests and doing the same kind of loot this guy, get the key or follow this guy, do this. So it is a little bit frustrating when it comes to that kind of thing. But in Far Cry 4, it's completely different. You know, there's no missions like that. It's usually stuff like um, uh, a, a local warlord has taken four hostages um, 200, 300 miles up the road, liberate them, but do it stealthily. If you alert the guards, you will be, f you know, it'll be a mission fail. So it makes it challenging as well as making it fun, you know, and, and lots of other ones as well. But just random events that happen, and random events do trigger a karma meter in this game as well. 
if you get good karma you can go up to the next karma level I think there's eight levels altogether and each level unlocks different things like weapons and gear and stuff so it's you know it's worthwhile doing the the good karma stuff you can also get good karma from doing some of the missions and by spinning the money wheels as well which you are plotted throughout the map I think it's about a hundred of them altogether so there's plenty of stuff you can do gameplay wise and you know it's pretty it's a pretty solid game that, that's the bottom line this is a pretty solid Far Cry 4 game plenty and plenty of hours of enjoyment I think now we are pretty much at the point now where we can move on to the conclusion part of this video so let's move on to that part okay guys so it's time to wrap this video up and I'm gonna give this game a rating of 9 dragon heads out of 10 dragon heads I think it's a fantastic game I think it's a must buy some people are saying on the internet that it could be a contender for game of the year I'm not surprised about this I think it, it is definitely a contender for game of the year and it could possibly be game of the year um, in my opinion maybe it could be maybe it can't I don't know it's still a little bit too early to say we still got a few weeks to go still a few more games to come out yet but I'm definitely gonna say it's probably up there in my top two or three games of this year I thoroughly enjoyed playing this game and I definitely would recommend it to anybody that's interested in open world games first person shooters or just picking up a game and having a bit of fun with the story and the gameplay value of the game I've been Dragonheart I hope you've enjoyed this review thank you for watching goodbye